Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and in today's video interview with Robbie Robinson, we learn Robbie Robinson's secrets to protecting against liver cytotoxicity from steroid use. In this interview, we hear how Robbie Robinson began using anabolic steroids, and he would combine his cycles with intravenous feedings of nutrients. And in this regard, Robbie Robinson believes that this is the reason why he has had such success with longevity in bodybuilding. Here is Robbie Robinson. Enjoy. Um, with your Mr. America win in the IFBB, is it true that you were natural up to that point? I was natural. You see, that's what I was saying. You know, since I've been in bodybuilding, I won all this time Mr. America, Mr. World, Mr. Universe. The first shot I took was Mr. World 75. After that, being sick like that, getting that shot, I was reluctant to actually get involved in drugs. So again, I went back to Dr. Walzak, and that's where he started giving me intravenous feeding, that to keep the blood cells normalized and healthy so that I could participate in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for him, I probably would have gotten out of it because the, the drugs had a real, a rude effect on sickle cell. Yeah, mm -hmm. because um, in your book, you've talked about glutathione, B12, mm -hmm. et cetera. So you think that combining the injections of anabolics with these nutrients really is what kept you healthy throughout this whole time say that again so in your book you state that you took the injection yeah, I think, yeah of course i totally agree with you that's what i was saying earlier if it had not been for those nutrients that the d that the glutathione goes back and it has amino acids in, but what it does it doesn't allow you to get old it doesn't allow the blood cells to become old it doesn't allow the the the, the your, your liver to be the uh in uh, be um what they call it um infected or the blood cells or the heart and the arteries and all this stuff i think it what it does it gives you longevity it's like having a longevity shot exactly what's happening there. so I, I as i said to you i didn't age as fast i noticed that i kept looking at myself and i kept saying wow your skin is not loose like the older people get as you get older especially yeah. the body once you come down off of that if you look at all my pictures, my skin doesn't sag. No, that's right. That's, that's what I'm saying. See, that's because of the fact that I've been practicing health for so long that the body says, hey, I'm stable. I'm going to stay this way. All you have to do is keep being healthy, doing the right thing, feed me the right nutrients, eating properly, being on time with your food, being on time with your training, being on time with your meal, making sure you hydrate yourself. If a person has sickle cell doesn't hydrate themselves, they become dehydrated. And then that process just create problems for the, the blood cells that go through the veins, okay? For the body to breathe complexly, so that the, uh, the arteries stay flexible. So I've been practicing all this stuff for so long that it's, to me, it just seemed like natural. Yes. My body functions just like I'm a young man, a young older, instead of an older person, a young person, seriously. I'm amazed that my skin hasn't sagged because normally when a bodybuilder comes out, the skin sags. Yeah. You have all kinds of wrinkles and problems. And I've always been the kind of person that is, you know, a little bit vain. <laughs> I want to look good all the time. So <laughs> I want to, I, I did everything I can to take care of myself. And I really do believe practicing all that help for so many years has helped me maintain what I have today. That's why they call you Mr. Yeah. Lifestyle. <laughs> yep, Mr. Lifestyle. <laughs> Not Did really. you ever do any other compounds? Uh, I mean, testosterone, Dianabol, Winstrol, Anabol. Never got into it. I just never got into it because the only, you know, you know, I have a list of of, of all of that stuff. And I went, as I said, I went back to school, Santa Monica College and studied all of that. And the only steroid, really, everybody said, well, it makes you hold water. You don't have, you know, aren't able to get, uh, what is it, uh, a proper male reaction uh, uh, correction of the of, of your own natural hormone. So, Dekka Robin is the only drug that builds muscle. Testosterone, to me, has an effect on your testosterone by lowering it to a certain degree. I know that a lot of people today use a testosterone shot because they can't be active and their body is not able to get that overall stimulation where they can be normal as a male. I totally believe that that's not so. I think I use a lot of herd like Goody. Uh, what is it, uh, go to cola, which is actually a stimulant. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarsaparilla, all these things actually build your testosterone. So I'm a heavy into the herb cycle too. I take a lot of herbs to help stimulate the testosterone level. I don't just sit around and 
take all, it would take all those drugs to enhance my physique, but I could help. I've taken what is it, milk tissue, which actually regenerates the liver and the kidney for 50 years. So I have wow. a found, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I've been doing all these things for so long that it's, to me, is that's why my body's maintained itself. Heart thorn berry or ginkgo biloba, all these things give the blood oxygen. A heart thorn berry exercises the arteries. So you can't build up cholesterol in the arteries. Yeah. It breaks it up and flushes it out of the system. But see, bodybuilders don't have no clue about these kind of things. They're out there, but they don't study it. And see, I took it upon myself to study because I really wanted to be healthy when I got out of bodybuilding. I really didn't want to look old. I didn't really want to uh, be unhealthy. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to come out of it in a healthy sense so that people all over the world are bodybuilders and say, wow, Robin is the only one that's making it or made it. And that's, that's what it is today. Everybody see me, they think like, whoa, holy man, this guy been around forever. But that's what it is. I've maintained such a health profile that I have maintained being around here forever. <laughs> being around right. here forever. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. Um, a lot of people may not believe that you were natural for the Mr. America, but can you describe your financial situation, your whole situation? There was no. I had no money. Exactly. There was no money. I mean, we came out here. I came out here at 75. Joe Weeder put me in a warehouse to work. I get $100 a week. Uh, he would give me that $100 a week on a Friday. And I couldn't collect it on that $100 a week until next Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You understand what I said? Absolutely. I mean, I mean it, it, that's just how it was. They see, they know you didn't have the money. They know you didn't have a lawyer that's going to go out there and fight for you. They knew that you were on their grounds. So mm -hmm. they could pretty much treat you any way they want. Exactly. You could say too much. If you say too much, then they take the $100. Yeah. But that's how I grew up in the business. I never got a contract for the, from the weed. Never, ever. Because of the fact I spoke out. I said, hey, listen, come on, guys. I mean, you're using my pictures. You're using this. But they didn't want to pay me. I don't give blacks contracts. That's what I heard. So I went throughout my whole career not ever having a contract. The only money that I made out of bodybuilding was from the fact of my place in the competition. Thank God I met a good guy that was a lawyer that invested it. If it had not been for him, I would have been up, up the creek. There was no money. First place in those days was $6,000. And it's still to the day that same amount of money. So the sport really, the biggest payment comes from Arnold Classic and Olympia. There's yeah. really no money in bodybuilding. By the time you take that what, three, four hundred thousand dollars from the Olympia? You got drug bills, house bills, car bills, wife bills, gift bill, this girl bill, that kind of, forget about it. You broke. You don't yeah. have that much money. They say bodybuilders five million or bodybuilders ten million. Some of them might have it if they've gotten into a good with good companies that will pay them that kind of money. But back in those days, you was at Weeder's Mercy. That was nothing you could do. And the competition money, you know, that was just enough to pay your rent, eat your food, and buy your girl some clothes and buy yourself some clothes. Exactly. It wasn't a lot of money. <clears throat> Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Um, See, yeah. People think that people think that bodybuilders come out of that and they are rich. I'm not rich. I'm not even close to being rich. But I took my money and I had invested it in the right order so I can get a nice $5,000 a month or $3,000 a month according to whatever that thing worked. But if it wasn't for that, for George Zachary, who actually invested that money for me, I would be probably out there on the street in a box. <laughs> yeah, I get Seriously. it. Seriously. You have to really think. People have to really think about it. There was not a lot of money. You're not going to be able to to really make a lot of money because you're, you're under the Weeder empire. They can do treat you whichever way they like. If you say something, as I said earlier, they can take that away from you, too. You remember Denny Gable? Yes. And we see, Denny Gable and I, when they stopped coming up with the movie Pumping Iron, they didn't want to pay anybody nothing. They wanted just to film, stay in the background, and film it basically around Arnold, because they were trying to make Arnold a star. We weren't the star. We were just the background people. <laughs> so when Arnold came in and they signed the contract, they wanted us to sign a contract, Nobody wants to sign this country. And so I, Danny Gable and I got up and walked out of the meeting because of the fact they didn't want to give us not, not even $100. I thought, wow, that's heavy. At least give us something. So they said, no, I got up and Danny Gable and I walked out of the meeting. 
when he walked out of the meeting, then it was getting four hundred dollars a month from Weeder. They cut it to two hundred. Wow. He couldn't even pay his rent. I'm one block from where I live. He couldn't even pay his rent. His wife left him, moved back to her state. She was a she was a flight attendant because he couldn't come up with that other money. So he had ended up pretty much on the street, man. He died, had a heart attack, went back to, to Iowa, had a heart, became a priest, had a heart attack and died at 50. See, people don't even recognize that or even talk about him. I do because I had a lot of respect for him. He got up and walked out of that party. His money went from $400 a month to $200. From $200 to $100. From $100 to $100. That was it. He was out of there. They eased him out of there. But he was a good-looking guy. He had a great future. I thought he would be the next Arnold, really. Yeah. Good-looking person. But they decided that it was like a, a rule of law. You didn't do that. <clears throat> yeah, I ask all these questions because I think a lot of people find it very difficult to believe. I don't, definitely, because I've read your book. I've seen your struggles. I've mm -hmm. seen how genetically gifted you are, your foundation, the way you ate. All these things were, you know... Discipline was was uh, in you since since you were born, basically. But a mm -hmm. lot of people will find it very difficult because they don't understand the, the situation as it was back then. Um, that most of you, most of you golden era bodybuilders, built your foundation purely on food and hard work, and that's a lot what of people, it was. a lot of people don't understand you, that you had no right. money to, to pay for these drugs that a lot yep. of people now have access to. Yeah, it's it is. It was a difficult time for bodybuilding, but they were trying to make it into something that was glamorous, which was a good idea. But you can't take and abuse and misuse the people that are there that are your background. I figured when we signed, we, they had us sign contracts for 50, I think it was 75,000 or 50,000. When I took the contract to my lawyer, he read the contract. He said, you get nothing. You get zero. You get no money. I said, what? He said, you don't get anything. It's all a lie, Rob. It's a fraud. And so I went back to the readers and I said, hey, listen, this is a lie. This is a fraud. They said to me, point blank, uh, you can take it or leave it. You're not getting anything. They built that movie around, made all famous against other people not getting anything. We signed that $50,000 contract. That $50,000 contract was nothing. It had no value. Nobody would back it. I took mine to a lawyer. The lawyer told me it would take me $50,000 to even take the job. <laughs> <laughs> the people don't realize all of that. What's in that book is true fact, but they don't want to, a lot of people don't want to deal with it. It's, it's, I'll be honest with you. It's like what's going on in the country right now. The Trump. Mm -hmm. It reminds me so much of that that I'm, it blows my mind that you can, bad can be dominant. Evil can be bad, be good in some people's eyes. I'm not sure how you can close your eyes to something that is done not in a good way, not for the betterment of things. I'm confused by what I'm seeing right here today with 73 Series. In politics and what's going on in the country, I find it amazing, man, seriously. I mean, it's like I, in here now in this country, I feel in a sense of evil. I don't feel a sense of 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 beauty and pleasure and of fear. I feel a lot of that. You can fix it in the streets. You can fix it in the air here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, I don't go out in the evening because I, you don't know somebody might drive by and shoot you. Yeah. I, 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 I totally believe that at this point in, in American history, we are in a bad place. Seriously. And that's not putting it down. I think a lot of people feel like that. Not in a good place. That's <laughs> I think the way that people are coming to the country are being treated, I think is bad. I don't think it's a good thing with the immigration thing. I think it's, it's just a bad example for us as a, as a, as a race of human beings. Yeah. Uh, when you first arrived in California, you trained with Dave Johns at Bill Pell's gym. Can yeah, you really Dave Johns, was a, he, was a, he was a great bodybuilder. He was a Miss America competitor. He uh, competed for like years. Um, I lived with him for a while when I came out here. He supported me. He allowed me to yeah. get a good job working with him, which he worked with underprivileged kids or bad yeah. kids or kids that had gotten in trouble. And that set the tone too. I was able to speak with these kids back in those days and talk to them, uh, educate them, encourage them to be bad at what they're trying to get done in their life. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
And he supported you, right? Because again, you came out with yeah, Dan. yeah. He, Dave was a big support system. He he passed away unexpected for some some kind of a, a I think a, a affection of his liver and kidneys for my last turn of purpose. I'm not sure what exactly happened to him because it was kind of really private and secretive, and he passed away from doing all that stuff. That's a great shame. person, good guy. Yeah. Well, Mr. Robinson, um, I think it's been. An hour, a little yeah, bit over. Good. Yeah, we can come back and do it again. I yeah. love it. I think it's great. Anytime you want to talk to me, give me a call. You have okay. my number. Great. Thank Thanks, you so guy. much for your you time. You have a great evening. You have Thank a good one. Have a great day. You too. Thanks Bye-bye. So much. So that was the final interview segment from my first ever interview with Robbie Robinson in 2019. And I do hope you have enjoyed it. Robbie Robinson describes that after his first steroid injection two weeks prior to the Mr. World, that it almost killed him, as he appears to have suffered from sickle cell shock. He spoke to his doctor, Dr. Mike Walzak, who recommended intravenous feedings of nutrients like glutathione and B12. And this, in Robbie's opinion, is the secret of his longevity in bodybuilding, and how he protected his liver from the damage that could have occurred due to steroid usage in the late 70s and through to the 80s and 90s when Robbie Robinson was still competing. Combining intravenous nutrients with steroids, I have to admit, is a very interesting theory and approach. Glutathione is a powerful antioxidant, especially for the liver, and this is well known in the scientific community. And to Robbie Robinson, as he puts it, it's like a longevity shot. From what I understood, Robbie Robinson is still having these intravenous feedings due to his sickle cell anemia and likely has to do with his longevity. Robbie Robinson notices that his skin, for example, it doesn't sag. And these intravenous uh, feedings may have something to do with it. Besides protecting from liver cytotoxicity, glutathione is also recognized as a powerful supplement that can help increase the lifespan of humans. This all makes lots of sense as the liver is the central metabolic organ of the human body, and protecting it and keeping it healthy benefits your entire organism, keeping you vital and healthy. It is no wonder that golden era bodybuilders also, for example, ingested liver supplementations or just have it had liver as itself, not just due to its nutrient rich qualities, but to keep the liver healthy. Robbie also mentioned during our interview that he didn't do other steroids like testosterone, Winstrol, etc. Instead, Robbie Robinson believes in using different herbs to support his health. Robbie Robinson uses both Rhodiola and sarsaparilla, and other herbs to increase his testosterone production, milk thistle to regenerate his liver and kidneys as well, and hawthorn berry and ginkgo biloba for the arteries. And in fact, Robbie Robinson started Herbology to learn more about how to increase his longevity in the sport by supporting his organ health. This mentality and science of pre is something that many nutritionists and bodybuilders practice back in the golden era to support organ health and ensure maximum muscle growth, and is a topic that I was talking quite a lot about a few years ago on this channel, of course. Now, I have asked Robbie Robinson if he is actually on TRT, but he has claimed that he is not on any TRT, and if this is true, it would be rather surprising as his physique is incredibly impressive in his 70s. This is another topic we will delve into later on in the next interview with Robbie Robinson. So I do hope you have enjoyed this sixth video on Robbie Robinson's secrets to protecting against liver cytotoxicity when using steroids, as well as the brief insight into the kinds of herbs Robbie uses to support his organ health for longevity, which I found rather fascinating. In fact, there is a whole video coming up where Robbie and I discuss in great depth his herb supplementation for longevity, which I think many people will enjoy, and that will be coming up soon, so stay tuned. Whether I believe in Robbie's approach to keeping his actual liver healthy, I kind of do because I have seen other videos as well from other bodybuilders and fans that also claim that glutathione injections and other intravenous feeding protocols can help with liver cytotoxicity prevention from steroid usage. 
If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, make sure to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified of the next video. And if you want to learn more about Robbie Robinson and his approach to bodybuilding, please make sure to visit his website for his excellent books on bodybuilding. And thanks to my collaboration with Robbie and with Robbie's blessing, Robbie's arms and chest and back booklets are now available as eBooks at www.goldenerabookroom.com. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Golden Era Bodybuilding Booklets are available at www.goldenerabookum.com, including Steve Reeves, Rich Park, Vince Geronda, Larry Scott, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mike Mensa, Danny Padilla, and much more. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels, as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Get your gym wear and golden era apparel at the new golden era tees shop featuring designs from the silver era and golden era legends available as tanks, shirts, sweatshirts and hoodies in all sizes and colors. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases and much, much more. Once again at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Sups the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo.